Welcome back. Now for part two of the basic ship design, space build ship design. Next up we're going to go ahead and take our newly constructed spaceship and we're going to give it habitable modules. We're going to give this particular ship the ability to survive in space. Now the older instructional videos that you will find throughout the internet will discuss the use of um, basically atmospheric pumps and things of that nature that are going to deny the spawn planet of breathable air. Too often people will actually starve a spawn planet and end up getting banned from a space build server because the instructional video that they were provided as instruction on how to play space build told them to do a bannable offense. Anytime you use a climate regulator or a gas compressor on spawn, you can potentially damage the atmosphere. That's what we're not what we want to do. What we want to do is an easy methodology, give ourselves breathable environment here. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to get our ship ready for this. So I am essentially done with basic building techniques with this ship. So I'm going to move this guy off the build pad and I'm going to make room for other people. Okay. So now what I want to do is I want to begin to construct the parts that will make my ship capable of storing resources. So under the CAF tab you will find under life support different options. So one of the first things I want to look at is storage devices. There are different caches. There are nitrogen, steam, water, etc, etc, etc. A resource cache will enable me to store the majority of the resources I might need all at once. So for the argument of what we're doing here, we're just going to use a small resource cache, okay? So I'm just going to take this guy right here and I'm going to stick him in the butt of my ship here. There we go. Now if I look at this guy up close, you'll see that I have potential to store energy, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, heavy water, water, carbon dioxide, and liquid nitrogen. We'll get into the details of what each of those do later. But you'll also notice that it says it is not connected to a network. So I have to create a network. So the way to create a network is to go back under the CAF tab and I want a resource node. Now there are th a good 50 different types of nodes and pipes, etc, etc. But in general, the type of node that you will use most frequently is a large node. And the reasoning is this. Nodes each have a uniform range. And the node that has the largest range is the large node. So I'm going to paste that node there. And I'm going to go ahead and go back into my calf place and I'm going to use my smart link tool. Because this will enable me to link this to this. So I'm going to left click both items. And then you see in the upper left hand corner it says right click all devices to selected node. So we're going to right click and now it is linked. And what will happen is you'll see that my network will show the resources that this cache can hold and now it will say that I am network to network 28. The network number will depend on how many networks have been established on the server. It's not important. What's important is knowing that you're linked. So now this resource node and this cache are linked together. Now I have to have a way for when I'm in my chair to be able to use those resources. So chairs will also link to nodes. So now if I get my chair, in my chair, any resources in the resource cache are available to me in my cockpit. So I've got the first part done. Next part is this. I have to have some way of getting those resources into my ship. So I'm going to use a technique called splitting water in order to do that. So I'm going to go under my CAF tab and my generators tab. And the first thing that I'm going to need I'm going to need an H2O splitter. H2O, as everybody knows, is oxygen and hydrogen. And when you put those two elements together with two hydrogens, you get water. Okay, so we're going to separate the water into those two elements, hydrogen and oxygen, because we need oxygen and hydrogen in space. So I'm going to slap that guy on the ground there. And as you see, we get another message that it's still not connected to the network. So we're going to go ahead and link this guy to the network. Ah, now he's linked. And it says here he is off and he produces energy. He needs energy and water and then he generates hydrogen and oxygen. So we're on our way now. Next up, we're going to see, let's see, in order to split water, I need some way to get water. Best way to get water is a water pump. Now, in order for a water pump to work, you must immerse it in water. 
in general it is a horrifically bad idea to put your spaceship in a source of water. They do not mix well. and Sometimes they will crash the server. So the best thing to do in the whole wide world is to just come over here to water and under generators we're going to get ourselves a water pump. We're going to slap that guy in the water. Now I have a water pump in the water and I'm going to move my ship over here. Now I have to be close enough to be in range of the node because remember this node has limited range. If I try to link this pump to this node and I'm too far away, I'm a no-go at this station. It will not work. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to get my resource, excuse me, I'm going to get my smart link tool. I'm going to click on my pump, click on my network node, right click, and now my pump is connected to the node. Now it requires energy and it generates water. So there are several different ways to get energy. Too often you will see on a server people will go with things that they've been given instructions from a uh, instructional video. And they'll use things such as windmills and things of that nature. Most servers actually have rules against windmills. I'm going to teach you a secret. By that very process, they have created a nerf on these windmills. Most of these windmills do not work as well as you might think they do. If you really need power urgently and do not have an on-ship power generation device or a ZPM, which we'll discuss later, you can very easily come over here and you can select one of two devices to avoid server lag. The first one is you can go to a uh, actual water hydro generator, hydro energy generator. Now what this does is you put this in the water and you smart link this to your ship, to the node again, and it will produce energy just by sitting in the water. It is a turbine of sorts. It spins to produce energy. Another way to do it is the old solar panels. So if you go back under generators and you pull a solar panel out, you can actually put a solar panel on your ship and link this to your ship. Now, solar panels actually look at where the sun is and generate energy based on that. So we're, in, we're generating energy at a good rate for what we're going to do. So now we're going to go ahead and pump water since we have energy available. So now we're pumping water in our ship. And I want to split that water to make oxygen, so I'm going to turn this guy on too. And as you look, we're beginning to produce oxygen. So at this point, my ship is making about 200 oxygen a second. The reality of it is to stay in space for 10 to 15 minutes, I only need about 2,000 oxygen. Okay. Now, when I run out of energy, the generators will turn off as the energy accumulates. I'll get more power to do this. Another way to do this, if you really need energy fast, is to use, under your generator section again, what's called a fusion generator. Now fusion generators work by adding water to the fusion reactor and in turn that water whoops, keeps it from overheating and they produce power. So we're going to link this to our node again. Now I'm going to turn on my water first because this guy's going to consume water while it's making power. We're going to come over here and look. We're getting lots and lots of energy. We're getting lots and lots of water and that'll make us able to quickly split water. So now I've got lots, I've got more than enough oxygen. I could spend 20 minutes up in space like this pretty easily. So, okay, well, I don't need the fusion reactor anymore, and I, I don't need the solar panel, and I don't need that, and I don't need the water pump, and I got plenty of oxygen. So right now my ship has sufficient energy for doing basically anything I need to, sufficient oxygen, and plenty of water. And I have left no props on the server that will keep other people from being able to play in this area. Now, as I have added more devices to my ship, I need to multi-parent it again. So I'm going to take out my tool gun again and select multi-parent. I'm going to multi-parent my ship again. Everybody checked? Yeah, we're all checked. Okay. Now, my ship is fueled and ready for space flight. So I'm going to come in here in my ship and we're going to put our nose into space for the first time. 
with our new ship. And as you can see, because I have linked my chair to my spaceship, I'm not losing temperature, I'm not losing air, I'm not losing coolant, I'm not losing energy. And I have the capacity now to move around and explore. As you can see here, some ice that I could come up here later in mine if I wanted to, etc., etc. So, ladies and gentlemen, so this concludes the first video, or the second video, excuse me, of the series. This is the base design of life support and how to use life support. In the next section, we will cover basic weaponization as well as defensive modules. Thank you for your time and attention. Please rewind the video if you have questions or comments.